Oh boy, now that I've beaten Five Nights at Freddy's 3, I'm gonna move on to Five Nights at Freddy's 4. What's that? Game Theory did a video on it already? Huh, might as well check it out first. <laughs> Good job, Scott. You finally put together a game with a coherent plotline. Except... you didn't. Scott Cawthon, if all of us are right in our theory, then you, sir, are wrong. And it's terrible. It's like Donald Trump. Pretentiously wrong. <laughs> I really like how he talks about how smart he is and then doesn't know when to use a comma and when to use a semicolon. That's always a good sign. Vote for me. Shogun, you're getting on topic one douchey thing at a time. It was weird to see game theory so aggressively wrong about something. Uh, it, was, it was just very funny, and this is one of the videos which it certainly has like a very large amount of people who do like it, but out of all of the game theory videos, especially contemporary ones, there is a lot of flack on it, and it has a much higher ratio of dislikes to likes than any of the other videos. Maybe not any, but, you know, a lot of them. Hey, just getting them in the bite of 87. Here's why. Warning, this video contains heavy spoilers. You have been warned. So much warned. You're warned, you've been so warned! actually know about the bite of 87. The only thing that we truly know for certain is that the victim survives. Uh, they used to be allowed to walk around during the day, too. But then there was the bite of 87. Yeah. It's amazing that the human body can live without the frontal lobe, you know? Now that begs a question. What happens in this game? Yikes. That's, uh, kinda awful. However, here at least we do get a visualization of the attack rather than just hearing about it like the Bite of 87. We know that the Bite of 87 completely affected the frontal lobe of the victim. Now take a look back at this attack. Did you see that? The frontal lobe is at the front part of the brain right around here. Not here. Wow, my hair looks silly. So now that we've come to this conclusion, let's talk science, Mr. Patrick. Both the child's eyes and widow's peak or weird tuft of hair that he has there are completely visible during the attack. So the two main loci of trauma would be around the temples. In fact, the frontal lobe look appears to be the least affected area of trauma throughout the entire head. The two primary front runners of damage are the parietal lobe and the temporal lobe. So the key now is to determine what these areas of the brain actually do. The parietal lobe is primarily responsible for dealing with sensory input related to touch, which in a floundering nightmare state could mean that the child is using the intense amount of pain he received from that bite to transmit painful looking images with sharp teeth and jagged claws into his dreams. The temporal lobe, however, primarily functions to process visual and auditory stimuli. This is interesting from the sense of the former because of how nightmarish, yes, pun intended, each creature looks. The latter, however, is interesting because the game is built around listening. Around this region also includes the hippocampus, which is vital for memory storage. Perhaps because the hippocampus has been so damaged, the child cannot remember and therefore cannot dream of anything other than that attack. Even more interestingly, when the temporal lobe is damaged, people often have trouble recognizing familiar objects and faces. Because of this, the child is manifesting the only thing it has left onto objects it can no longer recognize. Fear. By the way, there was a reason why I pointed out that the victim survived the bite of 87. Because this child was not as fortunate as that one. Here's the ending cutscene.
genuinely believed that this child was being operated on at the time of this game, and his dreams were a result of his nightmares from the attack. People in comas occasionally have moments in which they can hear the world around them, and sometimes even see it. This child, when he sees the flowers or the medical equipment, is experiencing one of those moments. And almost none of this evidence is speculation. Almost all of it is either hard fact or well-established, generally accepted theory. None of this even goes into the meta-argument that there's a TV show that says Fred Bear and Friends 1983 on it. None of this even argues that this probably took place at a Fred Bear's family diner rather than at a Freddy Fazbear's pizza. None of this even argues that these are probably the events that caused Fazbear Entertainment to be able to buy out Fred Bear's family diner because it was probably going bankrupt from this incident, which was the first Freddy Fazbear's pizza before the Freddy Fazbear's pizza and the new and improved Freddy Fazbear's pizza shown in Five Nights at Freddy's 2. All of these points can be argued and they probably be very good points. However, they don't need to be because you saw what happened today. This was not the bite of 87. The frontal lobe wasn't damaged. The patient did not survive. My name is Shogun Shogunai. I'll see you guys later.